right, hello and welcome to another expert inside interview. My name is John Golden from Sales Pop, online sales magazine and Pipeliner CRM. And today I'm joined by Susan Hamilton Mayer, who is in New York City. How are you doing, Susan? I'm doing pretty well. How about you? Good, good. And I'm as usual here in San Diego. A bit cloudy today, actually. We did that. That's not allowed. But anyway, um, so today we're going to talk about uh, how to build brands with promise. And, and Susan's a strategy consultant and a visual artist who brings together analysis and creativity to help clients build better brands. And I think this is a great time to talk about, uh, you know, maybe this is a great time to talk about re-looking at your brand, given everything that's happened in the world. I mean, it's a great time for reflection on so many different levels, but maybe your brand is a great place to start. Yes, and I love that you use the word reflection because I was actually thinking about that just as you started speaking. You know, reflecting on your business and on your brand is one of the first things I do with my clients um, in helping them think about what their brand strategy should be. And I think this is absolutely the perfect time for reflection, um, partly because many of us have paused in various places of our activities, um, but also because it, we're in one of those moments where the world is rapidly changing and many things are being disrupted and reinvented. And so it's almost a, a mandatory time to think about your own business and your own brand um, and what it's going to mean in that new environment. Um, and that requires, first and foremost, reflection on mm -hmm. you know who you are, what you bring to the table, what you value, what you stand for, and where you want to be in the future. Yeah, and I think it's often when when people and people assume that they know those things about their brands. But I think when you talk to people, you often discover that maybe they did at one time, maybe things have evolved, or maybe they just haven't thought about it in a long time. It's so true. We all get busy doing what we're doing and and focusing on the practical, tactical stuff, um, which of course we need to do. Mm -hmm. And often, if if your brand has been around for a while, as you said. Um, maybe you've sort of forgotten or things have evolved since the beginning. Um, often, you know, as companies grow, I see this a lot with my clients. Uh, there's also an issue of alignment, right? There's the folks who were there from the very beginning, mm -hmm. who sort of live and breathe the DNA of the brand, and then the business has moved on. And so maybe their vision is a bit outdated or on the other end of the spectrum, maybe they've hired a bunch of new people who um, need to be kind of schooled in the DNA, um, which which may have remained exactly the same, but but the new folks don't uh, feel it as, as deeply. So both of those things can happen. Yeah, and, and so where's, where's a good place to start when, if you're going to relook or you're gonna reflect and you're gonna relook at your brand, what, what's a good starting point? Because I'm, I can feel there's probably people watching you saying, yeah, that's a great idea. And then they go, but I don't know how to do that. <laughs> so what do I do. Yeah. You know, so I think there's there's the two bits and they come together. So the first bit is really looking inside, thinking about yourself, thinking about your team, thinking about your products and your brand, what it stands for, what you want it to stand for, and those might not be the same things. Um, and there may be some work required there. Um, but thinking about your uh, offering itself from a practical perspective, what needs are you fulfilling? Uh, what special things do you does your product or service have that others don't? Um, and then also your your values, you know, what you really mm -hmm. want to stand for. Um, and then putting that together with who is your audience? You know, who right. who is it that you're serving? Um, your customers, maybe they're consumers, maybe it's B2B. Maybe you're a nonprofit and it's all sorts of different audiences. I work a lot in healthcare, so often there's four or five different sets of constituents that you're thinking about when, when you're thinking about your brand. But uh, really articulating who those are um, and getting granular about um, people often talk about the sort of minimum viable audience, right? So mm -hmm. often new businesses often start out as I did when I started my own business, by the way, going, okay, I'll just, whoever wants to buy what I've got, <laughs> right? right, <laughs> right? Yeah, yeah. And then you sort of mature as a business and part of that process and part of building your brand is thinking about, well, actually, who is the you know niche or subset of people for whom what I offer is really valuable and who need the sort of work that I really want to do. So defining your audience. And then of course, the final bit is thinking about who they are, not just what they need from a practical perspective, which is of course important, mm -hmm. but really what they're aspiring to in their own lives, in their own careers, 
Um, again, depending on what your product is, it may be on a professional front or a personal front, but kind of elevating uh, the way you think about those customers to not just what they're looking for in a pen or a computer, sure. but what they're kind of looking for out of their daily experience and out of their lives, really, and thinking about how what you do can serve, can serve that in some small way. Yeah, and I think there's a, there's a number of interesting things I just wanted to pick up on there is number one is, uh, like you said about the the audiences, because um, let's face it, coming out of this, I mean, maybe your audience has changed. Maybe it's evolved a bit. Maybe you now, maybe you now have to find a new audience. Maybe you have to move into an adjacent market or something because the one that you traditionally sell into is, is, uh, has been destroyed right now or is, is in a lot of trouble. And I think that's a great place to start, as you said, is like re-examine your audience and see whether you're targeting the correct one. That's right. That's right. And often when I work with, you know, larger corporations or more mature brands, that's a, an ongoing part of the process, looking mm -hmm. at adjacencies. And so that could be product adjacencies, like what, what new products mm -hmm. can we offer that make sense with our product set, but also, as you said, customer group adjacencies, you know, if, if this works really well for this group, what about, you know, those folks who are sitting right next to them, maybe it could work for them, but in a different way. Yeah. And then the other thing I, I think you picked up on there is I do think, I mean, this is okay. So this has been a global shared experience, right? This, this pandemic, and obviously it has affected people on different levels, depending on like how close you are to the, to the virus, whether you've lost loved ones or whatever. But, but regardless of how of, of where your experience sits on the scale, I think that coming out of this, I am thinking that people are probably going to be looking a little bit more for the meaning that you talked about. So, and that that tends to, I think, uh, infuse all of your life. So you start to look for some meaning or reason why you interact with the brands that you interact with. I think that's exactly right. I mean, I know for me personally, that's true. I think whenever you have a, a crisis or a shock, whether it's in your own personal, like a health scare, mm -hmm. for example, um, and, and this is just sort of writ large across society, mm -hmm. a, a crisis and a health scare, um, it, it, it tends to make you revisit those things that you know you value and think about, am I really, how close am I to what I consider my purpose or what is my purpose in my, in my professional life or, or you know, in general, um, and reevaluate how you're interacting mm -hmm. with the products and people in your world. And I think also that sometimes uh, companies and people make the mistake of overlooking the fact that your brand isn't your logo. It's not even your website or whatever. It's the it's every interaction you have as an organization. And I think that's where people can really differentiate themselves coming out of this is is have a more human approach. And uh, maybe, you know, when you call a customer service line, right, that's a representation of your brand, have the experience you have. So how, and because I think coming out of this, people are going to be craving more of that human element, however that manifests itself. Absolutely. First off, because many people have been starved for that interaction. Yeah. But, but I think in general, going back many years, I think about brands as, and this is something in the world of branding that I work in, a conversation mm -hmm. I have often where, you know, if you don't know if you don't work in branding or if you don't work around yeah. brands most people think about a brand as a logo as you said yeah. and uh in fact a brand is a relationship and, and when i what got me interested in working in branding because i came from strategy um and what i thought was very interesting about branding and the way i got into it was i started doing a lot of uh consumer goods work and through that doing a lot of you know the large sophisticated companies do a lot of consumer research yeah. And I was so struck by this very intimate personal relationship that they had with brands of cereal or brands of clothing, <laughs> right? And you think, boy, this is just a kind of an everyday household item. And yet they talk in such elevated terms in such deep ways about their relationships with those brands. Um, and, and so what struck me was that that, that that brand was something much more than the, certainly than the logo, but even the product or the, or the story, the back of pack copy, mm -hmm. all of which are important, but it's really almost a friendship. And then, you know, of course, when brands started going on social media and yeah. I was also struck by, so I'm friending my friend on Facebook, but people are also friending brands. I just thought yeah. that was such an interesting, you know, sort of expression of that personal mm -hmm. relationship that you have with brands, that those brands are actually your friends. 
Yeah, and I think that's where, and uh, and I think that's where you know B two B companies, uh, you know. Uh, need to get to, I mean, you're never, okay. I mean, when you're selling a product, you're probably never going to have the same relationship or the same impact as your cereal brand might, because it's just from childhood through whatever. But um, I think the more you look at the, the holistic experience that somebody has when dealing with you as a company, I think that's, that's where your brand really can come alive. And I talk about this all the time because mm-hmm. the majority of work I do is in B2B these days, but I, I spent probably the first decade of my career in branding working with consumer brands. And so I bring that perspective all the time to those B2B companies who may or may not see that their brand is the, exactly the same relationship just mm-hmm. because their buyer is buying on behalf of their company or it's a business yeah. to business product, they're still a human being. And you yeah. still have a personal relationship with that human being who is the purchaser. And so the brand relationship is exactly the same in a, in a B2B environment as it is in a B2C. Yeah, and I, think that's, and I think that's going to become even more important, as we said, because of the experience, the collective experience that everybody's gone, gone through now. I think, you know, making sure that all aspects of your interaction, you know, support whatever your, your, your brand is trying to do. And I think the, the, the human element is, is really critical. Uh, in that process. Um, are, there, are there particular things that you think coming out of this that people should do around their brands? Are there certain things that they should look at, do you think, or maybe look at it a little more closely than they normally would? Well, I think you touched on purpose. And, mm-hmm. and I, think I, I think I probably mentioned values a couple of times mm-hmm. because I've been thinking about that a lot from a branding perspective. I mean, it's always part of the process that I take clients through, but I think it's particularly important right now, mm-hmm. um, sort of on both ends of that, like internally, what are your values and what's your purpose? And then externally, you know, knowing that your customers are going through that same process with themselves. Mm-hmm. So the relationship becomes even more important because you're connecting at a deeper level. And I yeah. think that, you know, when I talk about building brands with promise, um, which is kind of how I think about brand building, that comes from, you know, there's a, a, a way, one way of expressing kind of that core essence. Some people call it the value proposition. Some people call it the elevator pitch. Um, but one word for that is the, the brand promise. And I mm-hmm. think that that's a, a kind of clever and beautiful phrase because it plays both ways, right? Yeah. It's the, the brand promise is, you know, I'm going to deliver cereal that's better for you that, you know, that your kids still like so you can feel like a good mom. That's a brand promise. But mm-hmm. it's also thinking about it really seriously as I am a product and a company that's promising something. Yeah, that, yeah. You know, if you promise something to your friend or to your partner, that's a meaningful thing and you better deliver on it and you better take it seriously. And so I think that word promise connects really well to this notion of the, the personal relationships between brands and their constituents. Yeah, I, and I love that, Susan, because really, I think that's a great thing. Uh, it's a great takeaway from everybody here is to look at what is your brand promise? Like, what is your brand promising? And, and can you deliver on it? I mean, is it really a promise you can make, right? So if, yeah. you're going to, if you're going to promise something with your brand, you better make sure that you can deliver on it. Because let's face it, if you make a promise and you don't deliver on it, it's worse than not making that promise at all. Oh, absolutely. That's the quickest way to lose customers. Mm-hmm. And then the other bit I like about the word promise is, you know, when you talk about, maybe you talk about a young person and you say, oh, you know, she really shows promise. Right. right? Yeah. When you think about like living up to your full potential as a brand. Mm-hmm. I think that's a that's a very motivating notion that we should, you know, again, as we reflect in this time and think about refreshing or reinventing our brands, what is the full potential of that brand? Is it right. as you said, expanding into new markets? Is it innovating new products, but thinking a little bit bigger um, about what, you know, what is the full promise that this brand could hold? Yeah. And I think that's a great point as well. And a great, great one to, to end on, because I I love that idea of the fact of, of looking, of going bigger and looking more broader and sort of saying, okay, uh, maybe there is more that we can do. Maybe we could be more, because as you say, I mean, that's, that's, that's motivating and that's energizing. And, and obviously there's, a, there's an economic upside to that too. Yes. Yeah. 
All right, uh, this Susan, this has been fantastic. All of Susan's information will be in her contributor bio that goes along with this, but please do tell people a little bit more about yourself and what you do. Oh, sure. So I am a brand strategist. I work mo mostly in healthcare these days, um, and I'm located in New York City. Um, I help companies mainly with positioning their brand and doing innovation, so um, new, new products and ideation. Perfect. Excellent. All right. My name is John Golden, Sales Pop Online, Sales Magazine, Pipeliner CRM. I'll see you all for another expert interview really soon. Thank you.